So today's video, I'm going to be looking at these circuit boards I designed. Now these are some basic boards, anyone could build these things, and I'm sure people will actually want to have these as well, as something they could use, because it'd be very useful for some people. We'll look at these, this is sponsored by PCWay. These boards were supplied to me at no cost by PCWay, so they sponsored this video. So thanks a lot PCWay for the support. We've got four different boards, they're along the same kind of vein I suppose, they're all very similar about what they actually do, but they're all different variants. So let's open this up. I've got 20 boards made of each one because I'm going to be using these things myself quite a bit I think. So I've got a bunch of them. And here is the board. It's an LM78 series board. So this is basically a linear voltage regulator board. So you put a 78 series regulator on here. It's got room for capacitors, diodes, right and there's the back. Nothing really to see on the back there. There's the layouts. Simple little board. So you put a 78 series regulator on here. There's room for a heat sink on here. It's got some mounting holes in case you need them. You either put a link or a diode in that position. If you put a link in, you get the voltage the regulator is designed for, say, 7 out of 5, you'll get a 5 volt regulator output, okay? If you put a diode in here, say, a silicon diode, so you've got a 0.6 volt drop across the diode, you'll get 5.6 volts instead. That's the idea of that, so you can actually just tweak the voltages very slightly if you need to, because sometimes that's something you actually need to do, is to tweak the voltages just a little bit. The one here on the output as well allows you to do the same thing. So if you want to, you can shift it up and then shift it back down again. There are times where you want to do that. A good example of this is something I worked on recently where I needed to have a backflow protection because this is powering a battery to charge up a battery. And so you don't want a battery voltage to backflow and, and discharge into the regulator. So you put a diode in series. So if you put a diode in there, obviously you're going to be losing 0.6 volts or whatever you're going to do, right? If it's you know silicon or got designed for silicon. So if you're going to drop 0.6 volts across that diode, then in this case you want to bring it back up again by 0.6 volts. So in that case, this one will compensate for this diode being in series and bring the voltage up. So the output voltage here will be about right. That's what that's for anyway. All right, so that's one version. We'll look at the next one. So I also did these ball colours. Red for positive, black for negative. Because that's nice and easy to look at, isn't it? There is the 7.9 series version, which has the diodes also in there. Basically exactly the same design. Diode in series here, diode in series there. As I just discussed on the 7.8 series version. Works exactly the same way. If you need to stop backflow, you can stick a diode in there and put a diode over here instead of a link to compensate. It's exactly the same. Now the next one. I'm actually going to build some of these up as well and demonstrate them in use. These will be available, I think, to people. So if you want to actually build these yourself, I'll make them available on my PCBWay page. have got the project page on PCBWay, and I'll link to that, and these will be on there. We've got a bunch of projects on there, so some of them will probably interest you anyway, other things. So there you go, this is the LM317 version, so this is an adjustable regulator. Very similar principle, we've got a diode here on the output to set backflow. We've got some fixed visitors here. And then we've got an adjustment here as well. All right, so this means you've got an adjustment range. So you've got a fixed visitor here, you can use either a service mount or through hole in this position. I've made it optional, we can use whichever one you want. And an adjustable resistor just there, which is 25 turn in this case. In this case, I've got it set for 1K, which means you can modify these resistor values to suit your regulator to get the output voltage you want. And if you use a 1K resistor here, which is what I think is the ideal value for this, it gives you a reasonable tuning range without being excessive, because you want it to be stable. So if you have this relatively tight, then you'll get better accuracy from that. Basically, it's based on choosing the right resistor values. And can you guess what version of the last one is? Go on. All the clues are here. Put down in the comments if you think you can guess what it is. 78 series, 79 series, LM317. What do you think it's going to be? Go on, have a guess. Bonus points if you get it right. The black, so the negatives, it's the LM337 version. Exactly the same thing, just reverse polarity. So this is a negative regulator. Should do exactly the same thing. Again, adjustable resistor values here. Tuning with 1K part. These M317s and 337s, I think they've got something like a 0.5 to 32 volt range or something like that. Or something like that on the output, I can't remember exactly what they are. So you can set these up really nicely. These are really versatile. But sometimes you don't need that whole complexity of adjustable board. Plus the 79 series is very slightly smaller because obviously you don't need the adjustments. So if you need something a bit more compact, you could use this. Of course, you could always do a surface mount version and make it even more compact, but that's not necessarily what you want. Sometimes you want something like this. The gear I work on, there's usually plenty of space inside it, and I'm trying to do something simple and robust. And, well, surface mount isn't necessarily robust. So there we go. There are the four different boards. 
Now, which one are we going to build? Should we do the basic one or should we do the advanced one? Well, it's not the advanced, is it? It's the more complicated one. Or should we do one of each? You know, do like the 7 8 series and one of the 337 negative regulators. Should we do that? Or 317? No, it's the positive ones. Keep it simple. It's the positive regulators. And we'll do a 7 8 series and a 317 series. We'll set the lows and test them out. Make sure they work okay. There will be links down below for these boards, like I said, PC Way page so you can order them yourself get them made by PC Way because it helps my supporter which is PC Way my sponsor helps them out a little bit and it also helps me because I get a commission from that if you order through PC Way website I'll get a commission if you just get the Gerbers I won't get anything from that it's not big money it's a you know a dollar or something like that it's not a lot of money it helps me to buy gear and get sponsorships so there'll be a link down below to PC Way to actually access these boards so you can look at these and order these yourself. I mean, I may even make a service mount version. If there's demand, maybe I'll make a service mount version, which could be a lot more compact than these. This is what I needed at the time, was this style. I could certainly do a service mount version. If there is demand for it, maybe I'll do one. I don't know. Let me know. Tell me down there in the comments if you want me to make a service mount version, if I have time. Problem is I don't have much time. I'm really busy. So let's build up the 78 series run first. Pretty simple. Regulator, we shut that in. Solder those legs on, shut the capacitors in. This won't take us very long at all. Build this up. There we go, put it into the pan of ice, it'll be a little bit easier now. Won't slide away on me. And I'm not adding flux. Do I need to? No, we'll see. Let's put these capacitors in. 33 microfarad. Now I've actually oversized these parts placements because I wasn't quite sure what people might be wanting to use. So these are actually way bigger than they need to be, but it's better to have a bigger footprint and not need it than to have a small footprint and find you, need, you can't fit the part on that you want to put on. There's reasoning behind that. I mean these values I just basically arbitrarily chose and I've chosen 22, 33 and 1 microfarad and uh, the 33 is on the input to the regulator. So that provides a bit of a reservoir for it. 22 is on the output, directly on the output, before the diode. The 1 is also in the same place. Yes, yeah, so the 1 and 22 are in parallel with each other. So if you wanted to, you probably could just omit one of those. You didn't really need to put them both in. They have different characteristics as far as frequency response, so that's why it's best to put in 2. Also, it lowers the ESR and things like that. But these are just values I arbitrarily chose, doesn't really matter. You could probably omit the 22 or omit the 1. The input side is optional if you've got a decent supply this is connected up to in the first place. You may not even need the input side one, but I'm going to put everything on this particular one because it's the test one. So we'll just put everything on there. Diodes, put those on next. These will be doing, as I said before, preventing backflow. You can power a battery with this, and the battery won't discharge into the regulator system. These are running 4007s in this case. Also, ground plane is always a problem to get soaked through the board because it's a lot of thermal mass there to heat up. I'm running my iron at 290 degrees. Sometimes I run it hotter than that. Depends what I'm doing. I'm not worried about putting a lot of heat into the diodes, so I don't want to put too much heat into the capacitors. So I'm doing the diodes first to help warm the board up. And yes, I do put a lot of solder on. If anything, I do tend to put on too much solder. That's the way I do it though. I like to see a nice big lump of solder there. You know, do a ground plane which is going to be on which sucks all the heat out of it. I do put thermal release on the pads but uh, they only go so far. So the heat sink is optional. Obviously you don't need to put it on if you don't need to put much stress on it. If it's only using say less than 100 milliamps or so then you won't need a heat sink. But more than that you probably want to consider doing that. And that's where I've got the mounting holes over here. So you can bolt down on something this wind or it can sit underneath the heat sink itself. Alright, let's try it out, see if it actually works. So, obviously we've got no loading on it, so that may affect what we're getting anyway. So, we'll see what we get. Let's turn the power supply on. We've got uh, 9 volts, that'll do. 200 milliamps, yeah, that should be fine. So, there's no loading. Stick this on the output. Turn the power on. We're getting 5.3 volts. Again, because we've got no load on it. And we don't forget we've got the serious diodes in there, which are shifting the voltage off slightly. These things do have a tolerance of accuracy, so they could be, you know, 0 0.2, I think it's about 0 0.2 volts out anyway, some of that. It's in a spec sheet for those things. If I put some load on this, it will definitely change. We should put some load on this. So I've connected up my DC electronic load, even though it's not actually turned on yet, it's already dropped the voltage down very slightly. Just the effect of having that in there, obviously the capacitance and the effect of that being imprisoned has already dropped the voltage slightly. 
So I'm going to change the camera view to my DC electronic load and we'll look at that whilst we're changing things. So there we go, seeing basically the same voltage there. Got 10 milliamps set for the time being, let's turn this on. And we've already dropped down to basically 5 volts exactly, so that's fine. So let's change this current some more. 20 milliamps. Now we are going to be getting dropped through that diode, right? Don't forget we've got the series diode there. Just go 100 milliamps first. So 100 milliamps, 5.8 volts. Let's check the regulator. No real warmth there yet. 200 milliamps. That's dropping so much because my power supply is only set to 200 milliamps. There we go. So I've set it to one amp on the power supply now and I'm doing 200 milliamps here. Regulator's starting to warm up a little bit and down to 4.8 volts, that's fine. 300, 4.75. Now we are going to be getting some drop to that diode because as you put more current through a diode, you get more voltage drop through it. That's just the nature of it. Half an amp, 4.7 volts. So if you were worried about excessive voltage drop through a diode, you might want to use a shock key instead of a silicon. I'm not planning on using these things for high current devices. I'm expecting to use these for quite low devices. That's doing 700 milliamps. Regulator's starting to get warm now. And it's doing 4.6 volts. How much of that drop is from the regulator? How much of it is from the diode? Well, let's have a look. I'll describe what I'm seeing here. I'll put the probe on the input to the diode. Diode input is 5.6 volts right now. Still 5.6. Still 5.6. 5.57. 5.57. Seven, 5.56. 5.55. All right, so most of that drop is coming from the diode. Okay, so if you're worried about voltage drop, then you'd use a shock key instead. All right, so now let's build up the LM317 version. I've got a used one here. I've pulled this from something. Obviously, it's working. I was the one who kept it, but um, we'll drop that in there. I'll clean his legs up, put it in. Got a diode here. Again, this is just a silicon diode. The shock key diodes I've got are quite large. I need to get some smaller ones. I'll just be using another silicon for the time being and the same capacitors as before. I need to sort out these resistor values and trim them and stuff. So I've noted on here the theoretical values that should be required for given resistances. Okay, so if you want these voltages, you need to use these resistor values here, R1 and R3, and change R2 to be these values. In theory, so that's the plan. So I'm gonna do something like probably this one here, the 15K, which is 8.75 to 14.58. That's likely what I'll use for this. See, I've got all these, so they've all got an overlap between each range. So you could choose which one you want to use. So I think I'm going to go for the 15K. So I'm going to use 1.5, 15 and 1K. A few moments later. All right, so I built the other one. I didn't want to bore you with watching me assemble another one, since you've seen the principle anyway. I will test this now. We'll see what we get. I put in the values I mentioned. Uh, I put in a silicon diode because I didn't have a shock key that will fit in those holes. I didn't have to wonder what size. I've only got big ones, which are just too much for this. And yeah, like five amp ones. I need like a one amp or two amp one really for that. Right, let's turn the output on and see what we get. Power supply is on. No magic smoke, that's a good start. Got it set to 19 volts and we're getting 17. Right, so that's way above what I was expecting. Now that's likely because we don't have a load on the output. There is absolutely no load on it. So no load means it's just trying to oscillate and find its place really. So let's actually put a load on this. Let's hook this up right now. That's set at 100 milliamps and it's already on. So, okay, let's see what we get now. There we go, 10 volts, that's more like it. So, let's wind the current down. So, zero current, 10 milliamps. There we go, just 10 milliamps is all it takes to get that down. Look, 10 milliamps gets it stable. It needs very little to get that stable, so that's fine. 100 milliamps, leave it sitting on that, and we'll try adjusting it. I've got a trimmer tool here, let's have a look. See what range we get, see if it is anywhere near my predicted values. So it's all the way one way. I think we're up to 14, was it? I don't actually remember what the values were now. I'll have to have a look on the back of the board. We'll see what we get. So 14.55. Remember that number. And we'll see how close the theoretical values were. 8.66. Okay. 8.66 to 14.55. What did I say I was going to get? 8.75 to 14.58. So I'm very slightly down. It could be resistance tolerances, but it's basically right. 
it works perfectly. So my theoretical values worked out okay. Now you notice here I've also added a capacitor here, C4, 100 nanofarad. That's on the feedback path to the voltage sensing, just to help smooth out any noise that may be getting in there to give a more reliable sensing of the voltage for the regulator to use. So yeah, that works great. Happy with that. So don't forget to check out the links on the PCBWay website to see these projects and actually all of these balls. If you want to use these balls yourself, you can get them made, not a problem. So go there, down there in the description, go and click on that. And also comment down below. Comments help the channel. Give me a thumbs up, that also helps the channel. Have a chat in the comments, I will respond to comments. If there's a comment which I can respond to, I usually will. I do read every comment. I think I'll do anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks PCBWay for sponsorship. And I'll catch you later. Bye.